11 News starts with breaking news. Good afternoon, everyone. For a third straight day, Allegheny County is reporting more than 200 new coronavirus cases. And we just got an update from the county. There are 230 new cases, two more deaths, and eight more people have had to be hospitalized since yesterday. That is out of nearly 2,000 test results. The average age of the newest cases, 29 years old. We're watching for big developments today. State officials are expected to announce new COVID-19 restrictions for several local counties, including Beaver, Washington, and Westmoreland. Right now, the exact sanctions are unclear, but sources tell us the governor is expected to announce new measures that will impact bars and restaurants. And in Beaver County, sources say they are being told public gatherings may be limited to 25 people. Since we expect to see new restrictions come down today, we were curious how many new cases have popped up in Washington, Beaver, and Westmoreland counties compared to in Allegheny County over the last week. We looked at data from last Monday to this past Monday. Beaver County had 117 new cases. Washington County had 126. Westmoreland County had 223, but that is compared to 1,293 in Allegheny County. In fact, Allegheny County has had more than 100 confirmed cases each day for the last eight days. Once again, there were more than 200 yesterday and again today. The county health director says she plans to revisit the ban on indoor dining today. Now, last week, the county put a one-week ban on dine-in service at bars and restaurants and in, at casinos. Yesterday, Dr. Deborah Bogan indicated the health department might relax the guidelines banning gatherings of more than 25 people. They also might allow restaurants to resume some sort of outdoor dining. And as soon as we hear from state and county leaders about what's going to happen next, of course, we'll send a breaking update to your phone if you have the WPXI News app. Hot and humid, two words on repeat this week. We just keep on saying it. Meteorologist Scott Harbaugh here with your hot and humid forecast. Yeah, Peggy, every day this week we've been at least 80 degrees at the noontime hour. Today, no exception. 81 right now as we look live into downtown Pittsburgh. Notice the haze hanging in the air. That mugging is definitely with us. And we've already had a couple showers try to pop down into Garrett County this morning. Notice they're heading off to the eastern half of the county, so places like Friendsville, Maryland, still dry. We'll see a couple more pop up this afternoon. And again, best chance of a shower or thunderstorm going to be east of Pittsburgh as temperatures pump into the 90s. There is some relief in sight for a 90 degree string of days. I'll show you the updated forecast I've put together for the weekend coming up in just about 15 minutes. New at noon because of more activity and increased testing, UPMC is monitoring cases at its facilities. The hospital said some employees have tested positive for COVID-19, many of them contracting the virus outside of UPMC facilities. Officials are working with public health authorities for proper contact tracing. UPMC says all of its facilities are safe to receive care. Video conferencing could become the norm for some court proceedings in Allegheny County. That's according to our partners at the TRIB. President Judge Kim Berkeley Clark told the TRIB that uh, in a video conference, uh, that if a video conference, excuse me, is not an option, that a judge should issue a continuance. On Tuesday, two more people associated with the courts got positive test results back. One is a Pittsburgh Municipal Court employee and one is a probation officer staffer and we told you earlier this week that a lawyer said Allegheny County Courthouse is a breeding ground a potential breeding ground for COVID-19 a live look now at Washington DC there is a coronavirus task force briefing at the US Department of Education this coming as President Donald Trump says he will put pressure on governors to reopen schools in the fall Channel 11 Serena Marshall reports from Washington Good afternoon. The president seems to be following through on his plan to pressure schools to reopen this fall. Tweeting just this morning, he may cut off their funding if they don't open. He tweeted schools in Europe opened with quote unquote no problems and wrote the Dems think it would be bad for them politically if U.S. schools open before the November election, but is important for the children and families may cut off funding if not open. 
Three of those countries, though, are seeing less than 100 cases per day, Germany less than 400, while here in America, cases are spreading at alarming rates, hitting the highest single-day total, 58,000, since the pandemic began. The president also tweeted, I disagree with CDC Gov on their very tough and expensive guidelines for opening schools. While they want them open, they are asking schools to do very impractical things. The CDC's recommendations for schools include social distancing, closing shared spaces, and mask wearing. The new pressure campaign for in-person classes seems to be an admission that as long as kids are home, parents can't fully return to work. But school administrators caution a one-size-fits-all approach simply won't work. Reporting from outside of Washington, I'm Serena Marshall, Channel 11 News. Pittsburgh researchers are looking for plasma donations to treat COVID-19 patients. According to our TRIB partners, they're asking for plasma from local patients who's, who have recovered from the coronavirus. It is for research by Allegheny Health Network, UPMC, and by Talent Blood Bank. In order to donate, you have to be symptom-free for at least 28 days. Donors can give up to once a week. And right now at noon, there is new research about how your blood type may impact your risk for coronavirus. We first told you about this earlier this week. Now NBC's Craig Melvin has this update. As coronavirus cases surge across the country, new research now has many asking, how does your blood type impact your risk? Of the four main blood groups, A, B, A, B, and O, people with type O blood have a lower risk of coronavirus infection, while those with type A have a greater risk. That's according to research published in the New England Journal of Medicine. In the study of more than 1,600 patients testing positive for COVID-19, those with type A blood were 45% more likely to develop a severe case requiring oxygen or a ventilator, while those with type O blood were 35% less likely to have such an acute case. The genetic testing company 23andMe also releasing data that shows O blood type appears to protect people from the virus more than the other types. But... Doctors point out, regardless of your blood type, no one is guaranteed protection, and factors like age and underlying health conditions are more important. And new at noon, a local university is working to provide its students and staff with food during the summertime. After closing for months, the Point Park Food Pantry is back to help those in need. Here's Channel 11's Liz Kilmer. As the pandemic continues to make times tough, Point Park is stepping up and providing boxes of meals to serve the campus community. For the first time in months, Point Park University has reopened the Pioneer Pantry, moving operations outside to safely provide meals for students, faculty, and staff in need. Starting today, every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to noon, anyone with a university ID is eligible to pick up boxes of food at Village Park or inside Lawrence Hall if the weather's bad. To minimize contact, the boxes can't be customized and are rather pre-packed with common staples. Anyone coming to pick them up is asked to register and wear a mask. Volunteers working at the pantry will be too and will also be properly sanitizing and distancing. We know that we had, you know, a certain number of students that took advantage of the pantry during a regular semester, but toward the end of the spring semester, that number tripled. And we know that as we go into the summer and into the fall months, people are still out of work and are struggling. So we wanted to make sure that we could do what we could to help them get food on the table. And if you'd like to pick up one of these boxes, you are asked to register online. We're going to post that link for you on WPXI.com. Back to you. And other news developing at noon, a man shot and killed in North for sales. It happened just before 2 this morning in the Green Valley Flats apartment complex. Police say the 29-year-old died at the scene. Anyone with information is asked to call Allegheny County Police. Colleges in Pittsburgh are vowing to protect international students who might have to leave the country. Both Pitt and CMU says they will advocate for their international community members. CMU says the students add to our intellectual landscape and vibrant community. Just yesterday, we told you the State Department is making it mandatory that students here on a visa have some in-person instruction, but some colleges could do all online learning in the fall. Nearly 400,000 foreign students uh, received student visas last year. 
And new at noon, two Ivy League universities are suing the Department of Homeland Security and ICE over the new policy. Harvard and MIT have made it possible for international students to take online courses full time to help maintain their status. The schools want a temporary restraining order to prevent the government from enforcing its policy. New at noon, changes are coming to Allegheny Commons Park on the north side. Channel 11's Mike Holden shows us what we can expect. Renovations continue at this beloved North Side Park. Within the last year, this fountain was added for folks across the area to come enjoy. And park officials say they're truly just beginning the efforts and they're excited for what's ahead. Big changes are on the way at Allegheny Commons Park. $1.1 million will be pumped into this initiative. Perhaps the most noticeable part of the project will cover three small blocks from Sandusky to Federal Street, right across from AGH. Pittsburgh Park's Conservancy officials are focusing on the portion that cuts right through Federal Street and the sidewalk. Crews will replace the middle lane with the raised garden and cut for a crosswalk. Street parking will be eliminated in that space as well. But it doesn't end there. The bike station will be shifted to a new spot near the bus shelter. There's also plans to move a fountain, fix cracked and broken sidewalks, and add even more light. I think it's a really good idea because there's a lot of uh, things are getting rebuilt around in, in this area north side. And the way the trees are, the parks, people walking their dogs, and if they're going to put money into it, I think it's a great thing. I think a lot of more people come down. And this phase of the project is expected to wrap up sometime in November. I'm now working to talk with folks in the area about what they would like to see added with a big focus on safety for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting from the north side, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. There is a race to find a COVID-19 vaccine. Why one graduate student believes he is the first person in the world to be successfully immunized. But first, an argument over masks at Pennsylvania Bar, how it quickly took a scary turn. Heat and humidity again this afternoon. I'm tracking a couple of spots that we'll see some rain before the end of the day. You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now.
We've always counted on Channel 11 Morning News for breaking news. Now, we've expanded our coverage of breaking news where you live. Our anchor connects you to new information all morning long. Don't miss anything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. All over the country, we've seen arguments over social distancing and wearing masks. As Channel 11's Catherine Amenta reports, one incident in Philadelphia ended with a man pulling a gun on someone. It's a video that's been viewed hundreds of thousands of times on Twitter, showing a confrontation where the owner of Infusion Lounge in Old City points a handgun at another man on Sunday. The woman seen on the video trying to de-escalate the situation says the passerby was upset over the lack of social distancing among those eating and drinking outside. He kept going and kept screaming about social distancing. That's when Jamie, the gentleman who pulled the gun, stood up and was going to initiate what I thought was a fist fight. The owner of Infusion, Jamie Atledge, says he drew his gun because he felt the man was threatening him and that a bike lock the man grabbed in defense was a gun. As he's getting closer, he reaches behind his back like this starts pulling out a metal object, which I at that point thought was a gun because I saw a black handle. When asked about the incident, Mayor Jim Kenney said this. Be thoughtful, be unselfish, uh, be kind to each other, uh, and help us get some gun control in this country so that people don't resort to pulling a gun on somebody in an argument. Meanwhile, Philadelphia police have launched an investigation and are still looking to speak with the man in the video and any other witnesses. Many who viewed the 22-second clip on Twitter have already formed strong opinions about it. I think that this man needs to have his gun license taken away from him. I think he needs to have his liquor license stripped of him. The casualness out here is so eerie to me. That was Catherine Amenta reporting. Philadelphia police say it's just too early in the investigation to determine if anyone involved will face charges. A graduate student in Baltimore thinks he might be the first person successfully vaccinated against COVID-19. David Roch is part of a clinical trial at the University of Maryland. Early indications show the vaccine works. It is stimulating the growth of antibodies faster or about the same rate as people who've had the disease. It's exciting. It's exciting from the side of a participant. It's exciting from the side of a graduate student who's studying immunology. And it's also exciting that it's hopefully the promise of a vaccine by next year and life returning to a semblance of normal. Raj can't know for sure if he got the actual vaccine or just a saline solution since it is a double blind trial. But he says he had a slight reaction to his second dose, so he's kind of convinced he did get the vaccine. Shell Chemical tells Channel 11 that it does not plan to stop construction on its new cracker plant. It comes after reports that work could come to a halt this week because of the virus. According to the company, nine employees out of 3,500 have COVID-19. A spokesperson told us they're following all state guidelines and social distancing. But Shell suspended work at the Type back in mid-March, employees at the time said working conditions at the sprawling complex were not safe. Happening today, lane restrictions on Route 28 in Harmer Township. Crews will be working on the Height Road Bridge. Two lanes of 28 will be closed from 7 tonight until 10 tomorrow morning. You can still get off the Cheswick-Springdale exit. Pittsburgh City Council voted on a new quality of life program. A new council would advise city government on plans and policy regarding the LGBTQIA plus community. They will be in charge of conducting policies, holding public meetings, and and being advocates. It's really important that it's not the same people that have been serving or, you know, are on all the other commissions or the go-to people, that it really, and we need people who understand how government works. Mayor Peduto is asking for people who are interested in joining the commission. We're learning this after the uh, this afternoon that the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court was briefly hospitalized last month. A spokesperson said Justice John Roberts fell while walking near his home back on June 21st. He had to get stitches on his head. He spent the night in the hospital as a precaution. Doctors say the fall was likely caused by dehydration. 
Another curveball for 2020. There are 20 named storms forecasted for this hurricane season. And this is the earliest the Colorado State University research team's prediction was this high. The last time the research team called for 20 or more storms was back in 2005 during a record-breaking season. The peak of the hurricane season is between August and October. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. We've certainly been feeling tropical around here over the course of the last week, and that's going to continue the next several days. Wanted to show you the temperatures across the area this afternoon at noon. Just about everybody in the lower 80s. Some are said 79 degrees. I want you to pay attention to two numbers, if you will. 81 in Pittsburgh, 83 in Beaver, because the dew point is in the upper 60s right now. That means there's a lot of moisture in the air. The air has that heavy feel. Also means the heat index is higher. So in Pittsburgh, it's 81. Feels like 84 right now. In Beaver, it's 83. Feels like 86. By mid to late afternoon, the feels like temperature or the heat index is going to be well into the mid and even some upper 90s. Visible satellite, Trying to break away that early morning fog and cloud cover, so sunshine, plenty of time to get those temperatures up this afternoon. Just a couple of showers showing up on Storm Tracker, Doppler 11 radar southeast into the mountains, exactly where we told you this morning on Channel 11 Morning News they would be during the course of the noontime hour. As a matter of fact, eastern parts of Garrett County, there's Deep Creek Lake right there, so the eastern side of the lake picking up some rain, western side of the lake toward the Wisp Ski Resort or the Wisp Four Seasons Resort, picking up just some cloud cover right now. This afternoon, a stray thunderstorm primarily east of Pittsburgh, but look at the temperatures again. 93 for the high temperature today, marking the sixth straight day that we make it to at least 90 degrees. So keep in mind, this kind of heat, this kind of humidity, we tend to dehydrate easily when outside, we feel fatigued, we become overheated. Take your time outside, exercise some caution. Here's Storm Tracker this afternoon again, popping a couple thunderstorms in the mountains this afternoon, but that's about the extent of it. We could catch a quick one maybe over towards Irwin or North Huntington around 630 this evening, but for the most part, it will be southeast into the mountains. 72 overnight tonight, very warm and muggy with a stray evening storm. And then tomorrow, more of the same, mostly sunny, hot and humid. Slightest chance of picking up a late day thunderstorm. Check back tonight with Chief Meteorologist Stephen Cropper as he updates the forecast for the day tomorrow. Five day forecast with your weekend. Always in view, partly sunny, hot, humid Friday, 94, then a little bit of a reprieve for the weekend. We'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms. The emphasis on the word scattered, it is certainly not going to rain all weekend, but it will be noticeably cooler, mid 80s, and not quite as muggy this weekend. I'll be updating Storm Tracker again to look at the timing of those thunderstorms this afternoon for the mountains coming up next half hour. Still to come, the COVID-19 test that could be issuing false positive results. Plus, retailers calling for a nationwide face mask order will explain why they think it is the only way to stay safe. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gordon Lash. And I'm Catherine Amenta. At Channel 11 Morning News, we help you prepare for the day ahead. Definitely the heavy rain gear today with temperatures. Heavier delays for the inbound morning commute. We expanded our breaking news team to better cover news happening right now and give you new information throughout the morning. Let's get right to Jennifer Tomasic live at the breaking news desk. A huge impact on the area. In fact, we just found out. Don't miss anything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. We're on from 4.30 to 7 a.m.
Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. The FDA is issuing a warning to labs and health care providers. They say there are some false positive coronavirus test results. The BD Max system from Becton Dickinson is showing an error rate of 3%. The FDA gave the nasal swab an emergency authorization in April, but now the agency recommends that if you had a BD Max system test, that you confirm the results with another authorized test. As more businesses start closing again and the number of COVID cases rise, unemployment could go up again. And for some people, they may be applying for the second time in just a few months. Unemployment claims are good for one year. If they had stopped filing, they'd likely still have some remaining benefits on that claim. So they would need to reopen the claim. The Labor and Industry Secretary says the agency has paid out about $23.7 billion in unemployment compensation since March 15th. This is 2020 coverage now. The CDC released guidance on how people can be safe while voting. It said people should have several voting options during upcoming elections in order to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Also longer voting periods. People are urged to cast their ballot at off-peak times. Imagine working out in this heat with a face mask on. What parents should look out for when their student athletes come home from practice. A couple of thunderstorms popping up this afternoon. I'm tracking when you'll see the next round of rain in your neighborhood. Plus the bill Pittsburgh City Council passed aimed at bridging the racial divide. WPXI Now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI Now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news. Channel 11 Morning News brings you weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Let me get you prepared for the week. Now we've expanded our weather to help you prepare for the day ahead. Definitely the heavy rain gear today. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. We're on from 4.30 to 7 a.m. Pittsburgh's Chief Meteorologist Stephen Cropper tracking the weather in your neighborhood. 
We just got new numbers from the state health department. It is reporting 849 new cases today, and that is down from 900 some cases yesterday. And for the third straight day, Allegheny County is reporting more than 200 new coronavirus cases. There are 230 new cases, two more deaths, eight more people have had to be hospitalized since yesterday. And that's out of nearly 2,000 test results. The average age of the newest cases is 20 nine years old. And we're watching for big developments today. State officials are expected to announce new COVID-19 restrictions for several local counties. That includes Beaver, Washington, and Westmoreland. So be sure to have the WPXI News app downloaded so we can send you an alert as soon as we get that update. So another humid day on tap. Meteorologist Scott Harbaugh tracking just how hot it's going to get today. Scott? Yeah, we're going to do about 10 to 12 degrees better than we are right now. Current temperatures, 81 in Pittsburgh, already 84 in Greensburg, and 83 in Washington. Dew point, upper 60s, low 70s. The dew point is the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. The higher the number is, the heavier the air feels, the more mugginess there is. And we have plenty of that this afternoon. A couple showers southeast into the mountains. Not really a problem for much of the area. This afternoon for the pups, make sure they have plenty of water. I am tracking where a stray thunderstorm could pop up today. Plus, when you'll see better chances of watering the lawn in the coming days, it's coming up this half hour. Well, we all know it's been hot. It's hard enough to walk outside with a mask on in this heat, let alone play football. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman found out what the risks are and what teams are doing to keep their student athletes safe. Well, exercising in this heat is already tough, but having to wear a mask makes it even harder. It's a challenge Pine Richland's football team and other local sports teams are now facing during summer workouts. I mean, this is 90 degree heat, so you, you, there's a fine line there between, you know, COVID and, and heat on us. COVID-19 is changing how athletes are getting ready for the fall season, and that includes a new mandate requiring all players to wear masks. At first, it was hard to wear the mask and still breathe with it whenever you're out of breath, but it got got more used to it after the first couple of practices. Every Pine Richmond player was wearing a mask even coaches and trainers, but they say it can be tricky because it was also scorching hot outside. So heat exhaustion and dehydration are also a concern. And a day like today, that's that's probably priority number one, as long with the social distancing as well. During summer workouts, if a player needs a break and removes the mask, the coach tells me it's okay as long as the player is social distancing. Coaches and trainers are trained to handle a heat-related illness, and they are also giving players plenty of water. Breaks. If you're struggling to breathe, then leave the drill, go get a lot of water, and we're just trying to be really cognizant, especially early on, day two. We spoke with a sports medicine doctor at UPMC about how masks now come into play during summer conditioning for all ages. He says every team, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, or soccer, should follow UPMC's return to play guidelines. I would treat it just as you would another piece of equipment, right? And so it's, you know, if you have an athlete that identifies as someone that may be having some heat-related illness, you know, you, you want to remove that equipment. He says there are several concerning signs to look out for when a player experiences a heat-related illness, like dizziness, nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. Any player experiencing these symptoms should be taken to a shaded area to cool down, remove their equipment, and use ice packs to bring their temperature down. In extreme cases, call 911. That's also advice for anyone working out in these hot temperatures. Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. A Ross Township police officer deactivated his social media account after some of his recent posts regarding protests came under fire. A spokesperson for Ross Township Police told us Sergeant J.J. Sarawick's post do, do not reflect his status as a township employee. Officials say the post included memes mocking protesters, including talking about running them over. He voluntarily took his page down. The posts have been sent to the township solicitor to see if they violated any township policy. A live look at downtown Pittsburgh where city council passed a bill aimed at bridging a racial divide. The plan looks to improve conditions for African Americans by, investi uh, by investing in social services, in workforce training, low income housing and more. Channel 11's Gabriella DeLuca explains how this could help build up our black communities. After months of demanding racial equality throughout our country, City Council took a major step here in Pittsburgh by declaring that Black Pittsburgh Lives Matter. In a unanimous vote, Pittsburgh City Council passed Black Pittsburgh Matters legislation.
It aims at investing in black communities and closing the racial divide. If we believe that black lives matter, if we believe that racism has to be extinguished, the first step is to get rid of the effects of racism. The bill was introduced by Councilman Ricky Burgess and Daniel Lavelle. Our overdue is an understatement. This is the moral obligation of our country, and specifically the moral obligation of our city. According to Burgess, the first step is turning around historically black business districts like Homewood in the Hill District. We believe our rebuilt black community business district to mixed use, uh, mixed income development, once again be the anchor for black communities and a tangible symbol of black community pride and renaissance. But this is the change local activists have been calling for. Pittsburgh Black Lives Matter founder Tanisha Long says it's a start. She said in part, we are hopeful that the efforts put forth by our only two black council members leads to lasting change. And we are grateful to have them campaigning the concerns of the black community. Lasting change is what we aim toward. And Pittsburgh has the ability to achieve that if the city council is willing to listen to the people of Pittsburgh. Burgess tells Channel 11 reexamining the budget will be necessary necessary for change. Uh, begin to lead our city to solutions. The solutions, though, will be financial. So far, there isn't word on how and if how much money will be invested. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Gabriela DeLuca, Channel 11 News. Jeans maker Levi Strauss and Company is cutting 700 employees as it tries to recover from the fallout of the pandemic. That is about 15 percent of its corporate workforce. The company says it will not impact employees at stores or factories. Sales declined by 62 percent because of temporary store closures. Retailers have a message for governors. Please make everyone wear a face mask. The Retail Industry Leaders Association says different rules have made it confusing for shoppers and often leads to fights between customers and workers. Social media videos have shown shoppers getting angry when employees ask them to wear a mask. Fewer than half of states require a face mask in public. Protecting student athletes from a condition that is often missed. Coming up, the Pennsylvania proposal looking to save lives. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and we've been bringing you a special version of Local Steals and Deals, where we shine a spotlight on amazing companies and their passionate founders. Small businesses really are the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. With Local Steals and Deals, we bring you exclusive offers from these brands on products that make your life safer, brighter, and more fun at a time when we all really need it. Join us in making a difference. Simply pick up your phone and text USA to 65000 to learn more. Breaking News Desk is really an invaluable tool. You're going to get breaking news as it's happening. You can be assured that everything I tell you is something that's important that's going to impact your day. We have an anchor now dedicated to following the latest information as it comes in. I know the neighborhoods. I know the school districts. And that really helps to inform you so that you know if something is going to impact your family. As soon as she gets that information, the Breaking News Desk is able to go on air, bring that information to you and share it. That is a resource no one else has. If you see me on the Breaking News Desk, you know it's an important story.
Watch Catherine Amenta and Gordon Lesh on Channel 11 Morning News. Kids might get a new layer of protection when they play sports. The state house just passed a bill that will help detect heart problems in student athletes. It's called Peyton's Law. The bill named after Peyton Walker. The 19-year-old died of a sudden cardiac arrest in 2013. The bill does not require a heart screening, but it would put information on how to request an EKG on the high school sports physical form. The new amendments will go back to the Senate before heading to the governor. Sudden cardiac arrest is a leading cause of death for student athletes. Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium is one of the many zoos across America and the world affected by the coronavirus pandemic. The AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, says that the closure of zoos because of the coronavirus is hitting them especially hard, and that's because they just can't lock their doors and go home. And they're closed. They don't have any revenue coming in from guests, uh, but their expenses continue. They're, the facility has to function at 100% because it's the home for the animals. The group is asking the federal government for help in the next round of coronavirus relief money. They want a provision for wildlife conservation, which covers the rescue of the endangered species. Uh, that care can cost more than $300,000 per animal and it's normally paid for through all those entrance fees. If you've been waiting to take your kids to Idlewild, it is finally open, but it's gonna be a new experience. The coronavirus changes the park just made. Plus monthly storm trackers, we head into the weekend to pinpoint when changes will begin to happen in your neighborhood. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. you put on Channel 11 Morning News, there is a team that has been working all night to get you the news you need. The news doesn't stop. We don't stop. As a mom, I know your morning is busy. We're going to give you everything you need from the breaking news desk to weather and traffic. When you walk out that door, you're prepared. Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Allegheny County. It's a question that gets a variety of answers. How long did you wait to get your COVID-19 test results back? Some say it could take up to two weeks. Aaron Cargelt reports. It's been an issue since the start of the pandemic. I 
did my test on June 30th. The test still isn't back. But in the last month, investigators have been hearing from even more people who've been waiting four days or more for COVID-19 test results. Many people said it took a week or longer. Laura McComb has been tested twice. The first time her partner got tested on the same day at a different spot. I was shocked because he got told he would get his results back in two days, whereas I got told I would get my results back in seven to 14 days. She says she got the negative result a week later, but for test number two, it's been 12 days. And I'm still waiting on my results. I also spoke to a dad who's been isolating at home in his bedroom away from his wife and children for eight days while waiting on results. It's horrible. Like, uh, I, I talked to my kids through sliding glass doors. They're six to 20 feet away or through the back doors of the bedroom. The testing center told him it's backed up. Every day that you don't have a test result, that you are potentially in contact with other people, uh, that means that you could have infected somebody. And that person could have then went off to infect two to four more people and then each of those. So time uh, does matter. The chief of infectious diseases at SUNY in Syracuse says it all depends on what labs the providers are using. He said facilities with in-house testing capabilities can equal faster turnaround times and agrees with this patient's assessment. If it's a deadly disease, if we're really trying to like trace it, or prevent the spread, we ought to be able to do that within a reasonable amount of time. And that was Aaron Cargill reporting. Here's what to plan for if you are getting a test in our area. Quest Diagnostics says its wait time is about three to five days. LabCorp says it's taking about two to four days. It's 24 hours for Allegheny Health Network. UPMC's is between 12 and 24 hours. Plenty of people were cooling off at the Avonworth Community Pool on a hot day yesterday. And it looked like when people were not in the water, they were wearing their masks. Meantime, Idlewild and Soak Zone reopened and you're going to notice a lot of changes if you go there. Everyone must wear a face mask inside the park. They have to have their temperature taken before entering. There are 100 new sanitizing stations set up. Crews will work to keep the rides clean. We also have a sanitizing cleaning crew that will go around, will shut down rides throughout the day to clean and sanitize them thoroughly. Visitors uh, may have to make reservations online. Idlewild is operating at just half capacity. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. A warm day again today. Not quite the hot level yet, but we'll be there before the end of the afternoon. Live look at Tower Cam. You can almost cut the haze with a knife right now, as you can see into the downtown Pittsburgh area. 81 degrees, mostly sunny. No wind to speak of, and it currently feels like 84 in Pittsburgh. Heat index right now in Washington, Morgantown, Beaver, all at 87 degrees. That feels like temperature. That heat index is when you take the temperature and factor in the humidity, which is certainly high today. Same deal as in the winter when we take the temperature, factor in the wind to come up with the wind chill so it feels colder than it actually is. Well, during the summer, we use the heat index. Visible satellite right now. We've got some cumulus clouds popping along the ridges, giving a couple showers down into Garrett County this afternoon. Storm tracker, Doppler 11 radar. All the activity to the southeast right now along some of those eastern ridges of Garrett County. As we head through the rest of the afternoon, one or two could pop up in the Pittsburgh area, but I'm looking at pretty much dry skies most of the day today and certainly dry tomorrow and Friday. Saturday and Sunday becomes a little iffy. We'll see some showers, a couple of thunderstorms as well for the weekend. Now, storm tracker this afternoon. Here comes the bubbling of the showers and storms to the southeast this afternoon along the ridges. We might catch something quick in the Pittsburgh area over towards Greensburg this afternoon into the early evening hours, but by 10 o'clock, we're pretty much done with that. 72 overnight tonight with that stray evening storm. And again, most areas are not going to see rain tonight. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, hot and humid. 95 for the high temperature tomorrow. And again, there's the slightest chance of a pop-up storm, but a better chance over toward the highlands. Then Friday night, we start to bring rain into the area. It'll come in and out into Saturday. 8 o'clock in the morning, already raining. And I think we'll see off and on rain Saturday and Sunday, giving much of the area a half inch to an inch of rain from Pittsburgh south, an inch or maybe a little bit more to the north of Pittsburgh. So finally getting the lawns watered and adding to the moisture we saw during the day yesterday. Five-day forecast with your weekend. 
always in view. You also notice the cool down as we head toward the weekend. Still, temperatures well above average for this time of the year, at least a couple degrees above average, but the overnight low is a little cooler, which means a little less humidity and scattered showers and thunderstorms from time to time, both Saturday and Sunday with high temperatures in the mid-80s. Hershey's is already planning for Halloween. It announced a new line of candy. It includes the Hershey Kisses Vampire Chocolates. It's a kiss filled with a bright red strawberry cream. Or you may prefer Reese's Peanut Butter Franken Cups, complete with a Franken Green Cream on the bottom. A social media squabble, the U.S. says it might ban TikTok, why it says the government's reasoning is off base. Here's local steals and deals, Lisa Robertson. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, coming to you from my home, of course. Let me tell you something that is amazing. I was just talking to somebody the other day about home security, right? I think that's something we all wonder about. But a lot of times you're saying, yeah, I'd love to have a big home security system, but I don't have a million dollars. Guess what they told me? So just out of the blue, a security consultant said the other day, you should check out the Blink camera. Guess what Local Steals and Deals has for you today? The Blink camera. How amazing is that? So Local Steals and Deals, we really try to find you things that are going to improve your quality of life, great ideas you might not have heard of, and the Blink is definitely one of them. Now, this is actually backed by Amazon with all their resources and all their know-how. This is the security camera they get behind, and I love that. The Blink is fabulous because it's really easy to install. It's indoors or outdoors. And here's one of the amazing things. You can have HD video, you can have audio back and forth, and it's going to store the recording of the video, and you're not paying every month. Isn't that amazing? I love the fact that it's easy. I love the fact that you don't have to have anything big and complicated. I love the fact that you're not paying a monthly monitoring fee. And I love the fact that the one that we're bringing you is three cameras. Three cameras for indoors or outdoors. And here's how cool it is. So you just sync up the module with an app that you put on your phone. And then whenever one of your cameras senses motion, it lets your phone know. You can go ding, ding, ding. Oh, I see what's going on right here. You can talk to the person you see, or you can call somebody if there's a problem. I love that. I also do love the fact that you're not going to get a bill every month going, oh, no, you don't have to pay that. This stores it, no problem. This is one that is normally one of the most sought after security cameras in the business, and we have it for you at 20% off. So. Go to localsteals.com, one of the great ideas we have for you right there, and you can have peace of mind inside, outside, at home, or anywhere else you are with the Blink XT and the three camera system. You put on Channel 11 Morning News. There is a team that has been working all night to get you the news you need. The news doesn't stop. We don't stop. We want to make sure you know everything you need to know to get prepared for your day. We decide what is the most important thing that you need to know when you wake up. Once the story goes on air, that's just the beginning. It's going to change throughout the morning. It always does. That's why Channel 11 Morning News is here to get you prepared. We have the breaking news desk. We have Scott and Trisha looking out for you as far as weather and traffic. When you walk out that door, you're prepared.
The seven-day forecast, now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the U.S. is possibly looking to ban TikTok. His comments come amid rising tensions between the U.S. and China. And as there is more scrutiny over, over TikTok and Chinese technology firms out there, too, TikTok says its data centers are outside of China and not subject to that country's laws. The CEO is also an American. Instagram is rolling out a new feature it's called pinned comments. The added option allows you to pin a few comments to the top of your post. The company says it's designed to help limit harassment and encourage people to post nice comments. Other features soon to be available include deleting comments in bulk and choosing who can tag and mention you in posts. Money raised at a local fireworks show is going to help local fire departments. And here comes the boom. That event was held over the weekend at the Westmoreland Fairgrounds. At least 2,000 cars showed up to the free drive-in event, and donations were encouraged. Officials say they raised more than $4,000, and all that money will be donated to fire departments, Hecla, Hexburg, Mutual, and Norvelt. They all helped with safety at that show. The rest of the money will be donated to the county fair board. And that is all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5 o'clock. Meanwhile, you can get breaking news updates anytime on our streaming apps. Have a great day, everyone. WPXI is proud to partner with UPMC to present Community Matters. Women's heart health, that's the topic for Community Matters today. Joining me is Dr. Katie Burlocker, Director of UPMC McGee Women's Heart Program. Now, Dr. Burlocker, how do warnings